December 10th. It's an anniversary of sorts, 1971, 49 years ago. 30-year-old John Sinclair was sitting in a Jackson prison cell and listening on the radio as some of music's greatest performers came together for a concert in Ann Arbor to raise awareness to his cause because he was sentenced to 10 years in prison for selling two marijuana cigarettes to an undercover police officer. He's long been an advocate to free the weed and here to talk more is John Sinclair, a poet, a political activist. It is great to have you with us here on the show. Thank you, but I didn't sell the marijuana. I gave the two joints to an undercover police woman. Oh, so you didn't even sell it? No. Nope. Well, what'd they get you on? Idiocy, prejudice, all the things that motivate them, lies. So you're, you're 79 now. You were 30 back at the day. Do you remember that day? I know you were in a, a prison cell listening on the radio to the concert. Yeah. Um, tell us about that day. I was in a prison cell listening to the concert on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. Did you ever think, though, that you would garner such attention from some of the biggest performers in the world. I mean, we're talking about John Lennon, Bob Seger. Come on. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Bob Seger was a friend of mine. I was active in the music business in Detroit. I was a manager of a band called the MC5, which was the biggest band in Detroit. Everybody knew me. You were the man. I was a man. Do you think you were kind of targeted because no. of your beliefs and the culture at that time? No question. So with that, uh, how long did you actually serve? 29 months. And when you got out, you've continued to be an activist. Tell us about your life since then. Oh, God. 50 years is a long time. It's a lot of life. I, but I've been reading up on you. And oh, I will say, yeah. I, th I think that you probably have uh, quite a few stories to share. I do. Well, I don't know about sharing, but I experienced them. So uh, obviously, you were kind of one of, the, one of the casualties of the war on drugs against marijuana. But we are finally seeing the laws start to change. Here, in, at least here in the state of Michigan, they haven't changed federally yet. What's your take on um, the access to marijuana now and the realization that uh, it should be legal? Well, I think it's a good thing. I think the entire anti-marijuana movement generated by the state and the federal government was a lie. It was based on lies that had no scientific basis. And it was just a means of persecuting people that they didn't feel were had the correct outlook and weren't drinking alcohol like a normal person. So do you um, do you feel that they should go back now that it's legal here in the state of Michigan and and um, anyone that is sitting in jail because of marijuana cases or charges should they be released? What's being done to try to fight for those people? They should already have been released, but there's a couple of groups that are singling out the people that are still in there and they're trying to help them get out. There's quite a few. There's so, really quite a few. And then they also put it in the law to expunge their records and restore them to full citizenship. But there isn't any talk of reparations. I think they should pay us. While you were sitting behind bars, what was going through your mind every day? Did you use that time to write I, more uh, poetry or? Yes, I wrote all the time. Every day I wrote seven single space typewritten pages home to my people in Ann Arbor directing my freedom movement run by my brother and my ex-wife. What about that support? You know, you had a lot of support from the community, from people that you knew, but also people you didn't know. 
Right. Well, it was a bad thing. It was bad judgment on the part of the authorities. They should have never done nothing like this. And they paid for it. Now they're paying even more because they're being, they're having these terrible rights that they usurped taking away from them. So it's a good thing. It'll take quite a while for us to take it all back from the police. So, because they benefited more than anyone else in society from this war on drugs. What are your feelings uh, about the police and um, the, the law enforcement in general? I think they're a bunch of crooks. <laughs> So with that, so it was uh, the Freedom Rally in Ann Arbor 49 years ago today. Have you ever had the chance to speak with some of the performers other than um, uh, other than Bob Seger? Because I know you said he was your friend. What about Stevie Wonder or John Lennon? Have you ever talked to them directly? Yeah, sure. What were those conversations like? Fun. Well, you're not very talkative today. Well, so what? How much are you paying me? Uh, <laughs> you made me get up here in the morning and talk about some that happened 50 years ago. I don't care. I've lived my life since then and I've overcome this. Force the hell out of me. So what's your, what's your life like now? What have you been doing? Are you still an activist? I'm a marijuana activist, yeah. Tell us about some of the things you've been doing recently. Well, I participated in the struggle to legalize medical marijuana and then to legalize recreational marijuana. I write a column for the Michigan Marijuana Report every month called Free the Weed. I have my own radio station online called RadioFreeAmsterdam.org. I put up two hours of music every day. So you do that every day? Yeah. And and with that, uh, yeah. where can people find it? RadioFreeAmsterdam.org. Okay. Know. And so uh, you went to Amsterdam, right? Have you lived there or do you live here permanently now? Oh, I spent half the year there for 15 years. What's it like? What's it like living in civilization? Right, you talk about the culture, the, the difference in the culture around weed in the United States versus in other parts of the world. Well, I know Holland, Amsterdam, where they haven't legalized, they haven't legalized marijuana, but they created what they call a gray area about 50 years ago, about 72. And they allow marijuana to be sold over the counter in coffee shops and to be smoked on the premises with your friends. So it's pretty civilized. Do you wonder after all this time, kind of what's the big deal? Just, you know, you know, it should be normalized. No, it's these people, these fascists that run our government who don't want people to get high because if you get high, you see through the bull. and who's telling the truth. So they don't like this. <laughs> John Sinclair with this. No, you have a job if you get high. Yeah. So uh, with the, talk, tell us a little bit about that because, you know, now, even though it's legal in the state of Michigan, a lot of jobs still prohibit people. That's why, though. They don't want you getting too high on the job because the job is usually a bunch of what you have to do. Me, I don't have a job. I've never had a job. I'm not going to have a job. Uh, the whole idea of a job is... So, so how I do you survive? My, I live by my whips. <laughs> so are you still writing poetry? Right now I'm on SSI from the government. The government takes care of me in my old age. Okay. They pay all my medical expenses. I got medical problems. But if but you here. seem like you hate the government, but the government's helping you. 
Well, yeah, but it wasn't until I was 65 that they helped me. <laughs> if you can survive to get old, they'll help you out. Up until then, good luck. <laughs> You're on your own. Yeah. John Sinclair with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. He's a poet, a writer, and a political activist. And it was 49 years ago today that the John Sinclair Freedom Rally was held uh, in Ann Arbor. That's a long time ago, but you've lived a big life. So let's um, go into a few things that you've been doing recently. You said that you have like a podcast, a radio show that you're doing. It's a radio uh, station. I got 12 just yet. I put up two hours of music every day, blues and jazz. So have you had, what's it been like for you during um, the pandemic? Well, I've been sick, so I'm already uh, quarantined. A Are year you... ago, I, my walker broke and I fell over and broke my shoulder. So that lasted three months. And then when that got better, I had a heart attack. And I had open heart surgery in February. So I just stay home and recover from this. And I've fallen down, I fall down. I'm old. I fall down, I've hit the ground about 20 times in the last three years. So I'm all beat up inside. Do you I'm think, the, I, I know that you said um, it, this was 49 years ago, it was a long time ago, but yeah. do you think back on those days at all that you had so many people coming together to rally around you to make a permanent change? No, but I think about it because it's still happening. Same people. Some of the same people are the ones who created legalized marijuana. And also a lot of younger people, but a lot of people in my generation are still trying to change this stuff. I believe the marijuana movement is the last bastion of pure democracy in America. That we have changed these laws without any help from the governing bodies against the opposition of the legislatures. In no case has the legislature come forth and said, we should legalize marijuana. It's all been citizens through a petition process. Did we, you think that you would ever see this day come, though, for it to yes. be legalized? I thought it would happen in 1977. Wow. Uh, 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 uh. Well, John, it's been great having you with us. Uh, we're wishing you, I hope that you're feeling better, though. Well, thanks. Okay, John Sinclair with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. He's a poet, a writer, and a political activist. Thank you so much for uh, taking time to be with us. Feel better. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.